Welcome back to the Navy Sports Magazine. Time to talk men's lacrosse with midfielder Kevin Wendell. And Kevin, so far for you guys, all that separates you from a perfect season is two double overtime games. What is it like to come back from the mental frustration of that now and get ready for uh, what obviously is a huge game uh, with Bucknell? Because as we've seen already, it looks like every single game in the Patriot League this year is going to mean so much to your team. Uh, well, as a, from a mental standpoint, it's pretty easy to get up for Bucknell. Um, it's obviously a team we haven't beaten in, I think, like six years mm -hmm. or something like that. Um, and just uh, going back and forth with them the past three years, in my experience, it's just been a battle every single game, especially the, the tough loss last year. Um, so I think the guys will be ready to go uh, just to bounce back. And um, our senior captain, Pat Keena, talked about it at the end of the game and in a meeting, um, just handling adversity and being men about it. And that's kind of what this academy teaches us is responding to adversity so I think like I said with the mental aspect we'll be ready to go and I think we're gonna change up some things and I think we're gonna put it to buck now you guys have had some brilliant six-on-six -six lacrosse execution this year offensively and and then there are times where the execution isn't anywhere near where you guys would like it what is the key to finding that consistency because you have the people now I mean you guys are too deep in the midfield mm -hmm. uh, without question now uh, so when you're out there six on six, you guys are able to go after people. You've got the skill at every position. How do you find that consistency now uh, to where you're getting that balance throughout four quarters of play? Because we've seen you all in spurts run off some terrific lacrosse, especially in the fourth quarter on Saturday. Yeah, um, I think with that, it's more of getting everybody on the same page to play at the higher level. Um, it's like you said, we've had spurts where when we're on, we are on and we're hard to stop. But um, I think to counteract the lulls that we have, like the Delaware game and even last last weekend, uh, I think it's important for the guys to kind of just stop, like take a deep breath. and Because uh, sometimes I think we play a little bit too fast. Um, and We watch film. We get our shots. Um, right. We have no problem getting shots, but it's a matter of putting them in the goal. Um, and I think we're really going to work on that this week. We're going to spend the extra time. People are going to stay up to practice. Um, and I think everyone's really committed to just getting this on the right track and playing a full 40 mi or uh, 60 minutes. At times when teams have thrown zone at you as a group on offense, you know, you know the shot clock is there at some point, mm -hmm. but, but how important is it to be patient, especially when teams drop into a zone, to make sure that you, you don't waste the possession, at least get one quality shot mm -hmm. and make the goalie make a save? Because I'm sure the most frustrating part is, is when you don't even make the goalie do any of the work, mm -hmm. that's got to be the most frustrating part of that when you don't execute. Yeah, um, we've been working on some, some different zone sets, um, but it, it is, like you said, getting the right shot um, is the tough part. But I think the more we play against it, the more experience it will be. And uh, to break a zone, it's just a lot of ball movement. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have the guys to break the zone with outside shots. I mean, Casey Reese can bring it. Colin Flanlock can bring it. Keena can bring it. We have the guys. Um, so I think it's just a matter of getting the, the right shots as opposed to taking a good shot necessarily. Sure. Yeah. Um, but like I said, we, we're really working on it. We know that's one of our kind of faults is that we don't do well against the zone, um, even going back to last year. But we're really working hard and trying to figure out the problems on that. Is there, as a midfielder, is there a favorite dodge that you have, or uh, do you not favor one uh, mm -hmm. over the other? Um, I kind of just take what the defense gives me. I'm not, I don't like to predetermine what I'm doing because that's when you get into trouble. If say I'm going to do a split dodge left to right, and then if they're playing me where they're I might can only go left, and I'm kind of like thinking too much. So I like to just kind of kind of square up my defenseman and just take what he gives me. A lot of the times, um, when I, if I'm going down the alley and the, I see the guys overplaying me, then I'll roll back and either try and shoot or bang it up to uh, the guy at the, the middle of the field. But I, like I said, I don't, I don't really have a preference. It's kind of just whatever I'm feeling at that moment. Yeah, take us inside the game now. As an offensive player, when you see a shorty matchup, do, 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 do guys' eyes light up at the offensive end when, when they get matched up against the short stick? Uh, I would say so because, um, obviously, I mean, every every player in Division One is good. Um, it doesn't matter if it's a pole or it's a short stick, but obviously the not having a six-feet pole to deal with is a lot better. Um, but we, ha we have guys that can break down poles, like Grayson Terrain can take anybody. Um, 
but I know, that especially like me, when I see that I have a short stick, I'm like, oh, like I want the ball, I'm gonna go. Um, but I think we need to find the balance of if we have a short stick on us, not trying to cause too much, like, and just having the the game come to us. And you most of the time you're gonna draw a slide with right. if you're if you're dodging a short stick. But even if you don't, it's not the worst thing in the world. You just move the ball, and then you can you might get the ball back and try again. But a lot of the times when um, our attackmen have short sticks, um, their eyes light up, and I, I could definitely see why. So I think we need to find a way to take more advantage of when the short sticks are down on the attackmen. At the same time, what is it like to go up against guys like John Trainer, Matt Reese in the course of a practice? I imagine that's got to make you better because those two guys are, are two of the very best at their individual positions. Absolutely. I mean, the the couple of days of practice we have leading up to games are the hardest parts of the week because those guys, like you said, are one of the best. And if you're consistently going against the best, then that's going to bring your game up. And I think we've had some good battles back and forth just trying out this dodge and see if he'll bite or anything like that. And then when it comes to game time, I'm not, I'm not going to say it's easy by any means, but it's definitely a little bit less tough um, in terms of getting the looks you want just because our our defense and practice is so good no I'm not taking away anything from the, the teams we play right the teams sure we will play but I mean you're going against a, one of the top ranked defenses in the nation every single day you're gonna get better you guys get jacked up when you see Reese running down the field like a thoroughbred <laughs> you know with the long pole in his hand get ready to wind up yes. uh, and shoot because I mean let's face it as you know as a player with that pole in your hand sure your first your first job is to defend mm -hmm. but to see what he's able to do in transition because when he's able to do that it gives you it seems to give you all such a lift especially offensively it does it's it's such it's fun to watch like um a lot of times i'll be on the sideline like waiting to go in and i'll see him and i'll be like i'll, I'll even find myself saying, like, all right we're scoring like that kid can i've never seen a obviously poles can bring a lot of heat but He's just so accurate with his shot that it's just impressive to see. And even if he doesn't, if he does his little step in, that draws defense defenses to him, which opens up Keno like he did in the Hopkins game or TJ or Jack Ray. So it creates a lot of options, and it takes a load off the six-on-six -six offense when we can get goals in transition. Why the Naval Academy? Um, I was looking at a lot of schools when I, when I was being recruited, and uh, to be honest, when I first started getting recruited here, I took a visit, and I was I was just thinking I was like I don't think this is for me, um, but the more schools that I visited, um, I realized that the the group of guys at the Naval Academy that played Naval Cross is something special. I mean, when I was here, every single person in the locker room came up. I was like, hi. They introduced themselves. They're like, if anything, you need anything, I'm like, this is my number. Let me know. Um, and I didn't really find that in a lot of other colleges that I visited. And the more I talked to my family, um, back when Coach Mead was here. Um, I just realized this, this is an opportunity you really can't pass up um, in terms of academics, service, everything will set you up for the future and it will make you a better person in lacrosse player. As a lacrosse player, does it shock you now how many guys we're seeing 8th grade, ninth grade? Because let's face it, at, at the service academies mm -hmm. and even many of the Ivy League schools, I don't think they have any way of knowing what kind of student a person is going to be, but to see this sport now where we're seeing guys in 7th, 8th, and ninth grade start to receive almost the same amount of attention that guys in the senior and junior class mm -hmm. used to receive in this sport, it surprise you with the, the way this sport is going and now we're, we're looking at 7th and 8th graders and legitimately thinking they might be able to go play for the number one or number two team in the country? It does. It definitely surprised me and it, it kind of just makes me wonder how people that have never stepped foot on a varsity field, like you said, can commit to like the top five division one schools in the country. Um, but I think the, the plus side of that is the guys that get overlooked and don't really um, have good seasons until later on in their junior and senior years. And they get picked up by like the, the mid-level schools and the small schools that have the money still to pick them up. And I think that's a major con uh, contributor to why there's so much parity in our sport now, where you have a lot of upsets. I mean, any, any given Sunday, you're going to see at least one or two upsets. Uh, so I think finding the late bloomers has 
definitely helped our sport. But I also think that they should move the commitment back. Um, definitely not a seventh or eighth grade. I would say even freshman year is pushing it. Um, but yeah, it definitely has had a major impact on our sport. No doubt. Well said. Good luck on Saturday. We'll see you in Lewisburg. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Kevin Wendell joining us here on the Navy Sports Magazine. Mids getting set for the Bucknell Bison. Joe and I will be on the air from Lewisburg coming up on Saturday with all of the action. You can watch it as well on the Patriot League TV network.